directed uh, Kuhn and John and said, all right, this looks a good tool, we'll implement, we'll give it a trial period, and we started implementing at Cox, I think, last fall, right? Yeah. This is, what, <laughs> this is what happens when you have data loss. One morning, which does something, the next morning, Mohan deletes the data because of the context. He comes the next day and says, what happened to my data? And this is what exactly happens. We have no real good way of tracking stuff, right? Yes, we are getting data losses, but the management, if you can imagine, for them it's all about how uh, the data is being lost. Say, for instance, you have, I'll give you an example. This is, this is truly a bad example. There was a major customer in Arizona. We had a fiber cut. The splicer goes out in the field and looks at, uh, I, I need to find how the ring goes around it, and suddenly he finds out, wait a minute, this ring is incomplete. It's stopping at a splice. Something happened. Somebody deleted something here. Is it a conflict? We don't know. Is it something happened because of the Intentional deletion, we don't know. That's why we have a lot of issues that's going on. <coughs> this is a property, by the way. This is ATMT. <laughs> this is what happens when we have too many users using it at the same application. There's that's not awesome. a proper process defined. Everybody, everybody is driving through the same thing. For instance, I, once again, I'll give you a live example. You have a, a ring, a designer ring, and five people work in the same ring on the same sheet. Anybody who understands the PNI data model, knows how painful that is, right? You have the same sheet being touched, then you have logical fibers, you have sheet pins, and then everybody touching because of the conflicts, you just don't know how to handle it. We have a standard, we have an extensive uh, conflict, we call it PCC repairing, child connectivity viewer. It tells you the difference between what's in the pair top versus what's in the child, and you can decide which one to go with what. But once again, the result of all is this because of the too much activity. And you can imagine, like I said yesterday, with this network transformation 2.0, we are going to have more activity, a bunch of activity going on. So this helps us track how we can track these things. And this is once again, they come back to us saying, all right, tell me who did this. I don't know. How do I know? It's really so much activity going on. I get an email from the system saying, hey, Jada, can you find what happened to this sheet? Can you tell me what happened to this light bar? Dude, how, do I, how can I know? It's, it's so much going on. You have 9,000 alternatives going on. You have too many jobs. How can I tell? So, he, and also what happened was, once again, like a ring, ring cut, until the D-Day, we don't know what happened. Yep, you can imagine. Our management was thrilled by this thing. They came back to us, I mean, it really went higher up. It really, really went higher up. They wanted to understand exactly what's going on and all, all the VPs, and in fact, I think it went up to the VP saying, well, we need to understand exactly what's going on. Why the data is being lost? Is it the application? Is it the process? Is it the person? What is actually going on? Okay. Then we looked at Kuhn. And Kuhn being the Sherlock, he said, all right, I'll give you a tool. With this tool, you'll be able to find out exactly what's going on, right? Now for the geeks. I'm gonna go. <laughs> yes. Live <laughs> to this demo. All right. I think most of you guys know that uh, the diagnostics is based on Splunk. This Splunk is what is the front end of the application. So I just started this application and it gives me the details of this one. If you notice, it gives you the most, I'm sorry, I should give you the screen. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead. All right. If you notice, here the most time consuming UI, user interface elements, opening up a design, right? It takes a huge amount of time. But you can also see that posting of a job takes quite a bit of time. But for the majority of the part, you can see this is live data, by the way. This is production. You can see all of them, or majority of them, are opening up a slice. Also, it gives you in detail here how this is being used, right? Which are the most active dialogues being here. And this is for the last four hours. You can do, at Cox, what we've done is <coughs> standard for Splunk logging is about 90 days. You can request 
we, we had a fixed unit till for one and one and of three sixty eight seconds, the entire year actually. Yeah. <clears throat> so it gives you the most active bell elements in here and things like that. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm moving around here and there, but I really wanted to show you what how how do we do this here. I think one of the most important thing that at least I find is how easily you can customize diagnostics. For instance, if you want to focus on one single method, right? For instance, opening up the splice closure, opening connectivity window, you want to see how much time is that your small world is spending. Is it core small world? Is it custom code? If that is causing a lot of activity, you can actually look into this. So this is what we've done. These are the custom functions that we implemented. And once again, I'm sorry, this is for geeks. These are the joins, if you guys know. The sheet. Oops. Oh, it's too long. Maybe go into the regular mode. You are in the presentation mode, maybe that's why. So in the method, what we've done is, when there is a deletion going on, we track which project it is, right? We set object type is the actual object type, the auto, auto type. We track the project that is associated with the deletion. The sheet ID, the path, fiber number, and the sequence number associated with it. So now that we have the entire thing, also the user is there. You can Look at the user here. See this here? You can tell the user here and say what's going on here. Now, we gave this, the, the, the best part about this thing is I do not do this every day. I don't have to do this every day. We give to the system smiths, 
They look into this plant, they look at every day and find out, okay, what happened today? They look into it and say, this is what it is. You deleted this method, this path, What's, what was the reason why you had to take this action? So they go into the details and get the benefit of that. There could be a process that is broken. There could be something, two project managers might be giving the same truck area to do two different guys. They might be overlapping. He might be doing for uh, business and he could be doing for residential. They don't understand that. In that conflict, somebody deleted the path. So with this, they can, de they can actually refine the process how they can implement this. This is actually helping you in your day-to-day -day activity of how your workflow is being done. Does that make sense? So you can, so if you know like the object that was affected negatively, you can actually go and do a search against that object name mm -hmm. and it'll find it. Yep. So if it was, so it was corrupted as a result. So let's say in this situation with the circuit got broken, right, mm -hmm. the pro propagation, um, is it able to, so if the conflict resolution was what broke it, because somebody resolved the conflict the wrong way or something. That's exactly right, yeah. So you could actually see it change because the conflict resolution at that time Yep. Yeah. And that, so what it, what it does with this whole custom functions is you can actually write hooks into that method. So you need to know which method is calling the conflict. Go to that UI, write a hook into it, and write your own custom output that you want. You want the name of the project, the sheet ID. It does not have diagnostic by default, doesn't do that, but it's very easy to customize. So that gives you much more detail what's going on. I'll give you an example. So, see this thing here? In Spark, what you do is you have this index, it's a, it's a prod index. Just say it's a custom function. Just type in, I want to know fiber propagation relation. This is a custom method, that, right? This part. And you can have a date range. If you know that schema relationship, you, you can look at the schema relationship and find out okay, that object was touched between certain time frame start and end. You can predefine this time range and find out exactly who the culprit is. But I shouldn't say culprit, but yeah, it's a culprit. All right. The and, other, then, and then you can also go to that session ID and see yes. the user clicks. Yep. Oh, what happened in this? Yeah. Yep. So cool. So, yeah, and actually, I'll show you that part too. See this session ID? Change the URL, and you can get the uh, session ID instead of waiting for this one. But see the session ID there. Uh, I should have picked the time frame that uh, that path got deleted. That way, I could have showed you exactly what she was doing. Oh, by the way, the Splunk licensing is Cox licensing, and if you guys want to have uh, licensing done by Diagnostics, I think they are resellers of Splunk too. And I'm, I'm not a sales guy for Diagnostics, by the way. So you don't have to have Splunk for Diagnostics? Uh, you do. You do. That's your presentation there, right? All the logging is being done in small world, but you want to see uh, the logs. I think so, right? That's the only way I think. So you need to install the Splunk server, but it's included in the price already. Yeah, we already, like, we, we just bought it. We already have Splunk too, but they, we, we don't even incorporate our existing Splunk. Now we're going to separate it into it. Yeah. yeah, you can track the session ID. I, I want to show you these guys. I'm not going to time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are some custom dashboards that we've created based on this one. Uh, one of them is, this is going to help us 
in doing our 5.x testing that we are doing the upgrade. It will help us the most functions that are being actively used by the users today. And we can find out, we can, we can actually focus in that particular area to do testing there. Yeah. And I think, don't they have a portal? You can go to the portal, I, I, I think I love this idea. What they've done is, they've taken the custom modules from different customers and said, all right, I'm going to upload them on their website and you can download and you can reuse it as, as you need it. So in this case, you can see the most, in, at least in the design one is the layout. Layout is the most used functions of all time. This is going back way up. Not surprisingly, most of them want to get to a small version. <laughs> So with, with these functions, you can find out what are which are the most used functions. It's, I think these are pretty helpful ones too. Splunk and looking at it. So if somebody's name comes up, do not email me. Address. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. Address. We have a lot of conflation going on, right? That's the reason why you have this address being the number one killer for us. Wow. And this is our friend. Usage info propagation, light path. You guys don't get a lot of building complex? Confession. No, no, not much. We get tons of building. It's crazy. It, it, it depends on how you guys implement it, actually. It's building option? Actual yeah. option? Oh, boundary shit. building boundary option? Yeah. Uh, when, when we do get them, it's because somebody's made a structure. attribution change oh. and then someone else went in and put a shelf in the building. Right. I know, I know. <laughs> 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 I should just point out all the conflicts, but it's radically different. Yeah. The new one. Yeah. One thing, though, I don't know whether uh, small, but you guys fixed it. If the building has internals, extensive internals, right, and you hit it, hit the delete key by mistake, it will delete it without prompting. We found out the hard way and we fixed it. So, that's just why I have. So this is the one that I was talking about. You can actually see the names of the users in here real, real quick, causing the conflicts. You can tell exactly the name of the user causing the conflict. And it'll give you much more details of them. But this is once again a custom dashboard. It's very easy to, uh, uh, I, think, I shouldn't say it's very easy. Cool help me out. Uh, to create custom dashboards. But those becomes really, they come really, really handy when, when you have these custom dashboards. You can actually pinpoint the user causing more path, uh, path loss or data losses and you can see what's going on with that dude. It's, it's such, I was very hesitant to buy diagnostics because I was saying if I have a diagnostics in my small world instance and it's going to 
do something, take time to record what's going on, log it. I was, I was hesitant, I'll be honest with you. But surprisingly, we didn't, we didn't find much anything there at all. So, it, it, yep, what they are advertising is fine. <laughs> How much data are you pushing this point every day? <sighs> we did the statistics about this. Good question. Eleven gig per day, or was that a week? No, that was per day. Yeah, because you know, the way the spunk, spunk logging is done, the more logging you do, the less the prices. Uh, it's uh, weird the way the licensing is done in Spunk. If you have bars logging, it's less of price. How long are you keeping the data? 365 days. Yeah. So, on average, the logging just takes about 10 megabytes for you to get Yeah. So, no, 11 days. No, I think it's too long. I'll get back to you. <laughs> I have to go back and look at So, this is one of the other custom things what we've done is, as you guys know, we, we host small world in Citrix environment, right? You can actually tell the number of users per box. You can tell how many sessions were there at a given point of time. And you can say whether the load balancing is being done properly or not. Actually, I have no idea if this would be helpful to you. Splunk would actually do this kind of details. But in fact, you can easily see, not only this one, you can track your dev, you can track your QA very easily by having it in the, in the configuration module and easy, easily track what's going on. This is one of the things what we have done. It will tell you the details of the boxes that we have, 2021 Citrix servers, and will give you at any given time who is logging. So this fellow, it's quite a bit. I'm sure this is the confession that 168 sessions. I can actually change this to find out just for today. So in this case, you can see the users, CX921 has nine sessions, but in average, they should be doing around, total number of users should be around 15, 14, 16, that's, that's, that's how we came up. Uh, this could change with fiber x, by the way. You guys, I don't know, who was telling us about this, do you guys use any of the alert functions when a certain action or combination of actions is done, you're getting alerted? You can actually, uh, I know he sent an, you can send an email if something happens, whether, if, if certain function is being done, right? You can configure your Splunk to send an email, I believe, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he sent me details, but I didn't get a chance to do it. But uh, uh, yeah, that can be done, I think, yeah. <clears throat> How many active jobs do you guys have? How many active jobs? Let me see if I can find out. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. You mean like just open job, open designs, yeah, like, like 9,000 plus? Right. Yeah, well, that's all that. no, no. We're just 8,700, right? Oh. Are you talking about so per day? day? <laughs> <laughs> well, Are you talking about per day? Or I, that would be good to know too, like how many jobs you guys uh, post, you know, process per day. Per day. What, what yeah. you have active kind of, what's open in the database, it's kind of interesting too, but if it is at 9,000, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's, it says a lot. Yeah, we have what, what, 150 concurrent users? And most of the users are offshore. The majority of the work that Cox does, they offshore the work, they offer the work to the contractors. That becomes really tricky to handle, because it's in India, they are doing a job, a given file, and back here, the same system guy might be touching the same exact sheet. That becomes really tricky to handle that. But I think we do have a dashboard to that too. Based on merges, you can find out. I think I do. If not, we have to implement it. Anyway. 
we do not have GSS, so we have to take it out or we need to buy GSS. Okay. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 One thing I'll tell you guys is if you have Splunk instances shaped, if you have a dedicated Splunk instance, the performance might be different. We have a Splunk that is shared among multiple applications. That's why you're seeing this performance impact, right? My searches are not as fast as I want to be. So that's. All right. Go back to anything in particular you guys want to see on this one? Like I said, this is going to be an open interactive session where your ideas can be input to me or we can go and implement it too. <laughs> can you? Can you? <laughs> can you home kit? So, you know how sometimes when you're certain objects that you're inserting in the database, there's like a couple of different actions you have to take, like let's say like inserting a building, right? You yeah. have to insert your address, is the address selected, is the building, can you home in on like a series of clicks as well? See, all right, on an inserting of a building, what yeah. five things are they clicking in that particular window of time? I don't know. So. Yeah. So you can see all of the clicks actually in the order that they happen. So if you say this operation starts with A, ends with B, you can just treat that as a transaction. And then you can count all of the clicks. <coughs> uh, so you can bucket type. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to start using that. <laughs> it, it, it's definitely a big brother. So. Well, yeah, it's just a little bit of a way I like to message it to the, like message it to users. It's, it's a training opportunity. Yeah. Diplomatic. Yeah. Process yeah. Process yeah. yeah. And your reviews coming up soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you answer the last I was going to do tracks on my license policy and say the number of users you're mm -hmm. registered is how long they're on for and that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good that. Those are core functions for, for the diagnostic. We don't do anything else. It's being mm -hmm. built. Basically, it'll give you the details of. How the license are being used? It, it, it's it's a, it's a core function. Hmm. Yeah, we're past sixty. What's going on here? Does it say you need more? So look at that, Richie. This is what probably you were asking about. 345 might not be all of the users because we have parallel processing going on to job schedulers and everything. So if we subtract maybe, uh, and once again, these are the way this track is, and correct me if I'm wrong here. This is like um, if I exit out and come back in, and if I exit out and come back in, that it's an increment. It's not a snapshot of active folks or not. So this is today. There are 345 license used, but not this is not confirmed. That you can it, that means uh, there a session is active. Yeah. Or uh, for that matter, if you log in and log back in again, yes. that's true for you. Yes, yes, yeah. With the functions, our great part was we can focus on the functions, the most used functions that are being uh, used by the users. We can Testing focus on those in particular extensively to see what if it functions properly. And also, I, I don't know whether you guys noticed or not. When when I started this uh, standard page, it gave you the time of the most used function, how much time each function is spent here for, for a given method. So that is you can track those things. It's not really a XPR, right? But it's not a profiler, but it will give you an idea of how much time that is being spent on that. Have you guys used any of the data to trigger any developments or enhancements at all? Uh, yeah. <laughs> have you? Yeah, the HTTP tool will be enhanced. Well, you have accomplished. But not based on diagnostics, I don't think so. But right now, 
diagnostic for us is post-mortem tool, right? What's after the fact it will give you the details. But using this post-mortem results, you can improve your process. And I, I'll be very honest with you, we are not there yet. So hot data. <laughs> yeah, in, in, my, in all honesty, I don't think we are utilizing this diagnostic for me as much as we should be doing it. We should be focusing much more on this thing to get more leverage of this. So you but, do a comparison pre and post upgrade to see your results if you're keeping them yeah. for a year? Yeah, so that's what we're excited about is the ROI of going to five. Right. <coughs> okay. I mean, reach out to me or Kuhn or anybody if you want to get more details on this one. But here's the deal with Kuhn. He'll go to vacation every 15 days. 15 days. <laughs> <laughs> This one. <clears throat> Once again, uh, this really helped us. Our, our system, SMEs are using it. That's, I think that's probably the best part. Kelly and George, those guys, they are in system, they have access to Splunk. They actually use this system. It is actually helping them find out uh, easily who is actually the culprit, how they can solve the problem, at least in the process flow also. Hopefully, we will go further beyond using this application to have much more reporting aspect because if you think about it, a higher management don't give a crap about this. All they need is some graphs, some pie charts, finding out what's going on. We have to we, we have to get there. Next steps, that's exactly what our next steps are. We have to utilize Splunk and diagnostics way too much and get more results out of it. At least and that's what I think. And then questions you can call cool. <laughs> When he's not on vacation. Yeah, when he's on vacation. Alright, anything? Q&A? No? All good? You get a share notes in the user conference. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, JDev, I just want to announce here, we're actually going to be conducting a webinar on the 21st of 